What's up, Internet? It's ya boy, Nerdy, and it's time for a finale. We did it. We conquered the sky, and we got through Skypea. That's right. It's the final episode. It's 195. We're doing it as a one -er because I always kind of like to end. I don't like to start the next arc in the same YouTube video. You know what I mean? So we're going to do this. We're going to talk about Skypea a little bit. Then we're going to get out of here. And I'll see you on Thursday for more One Piece. All right, let's dive right into Skypea. We're skipping into Skypea here. Uh, if you want that flying through action, go to patreon.com slash nerdynightly. But if you don't, stay here because you're already here. And we did it. We got through the longest arc yet, but we got more to come. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go now. Skypea. Skypea. Skibbity pop 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 do, do, did you know there's an awesome treasure at the end of the sea? Whoever gets it can be king of the pirates. Bon voyage, Scooby Dumpy Doopy Dumpy Doo. Single telescope. We can see that the Earth is flat. <laughs> I'm never letting that flat Earth shit go. It's too funny. Bon voyage. To rain precious in my life. Tail into the future. You better run, Straw Hats. They are coming for you. You stole the gold when you spelunked in a snake. This show's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely a cannon. That makes sense, Usopp. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she waited so long to ask if he was okay. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just like Mont Blanc Nolan leaving, not knowing that Calgara also cared about him. We have to run to the beach and yell at them, like the end of Halabasta, done all over again. That's cute. Does Isa eat a devil fruit at some point in the show? <laughs> Gotta love enforcing beauty standards on children. You're a girl, so you should have long hair. Oh, the statue made it. That's good. Fucking panda, man. That was wild. The strong argument. Maybe just don't use the word God here. You know what I mean? Like, maybe just call him, like, the mayor or the governor. Banger. Gotta get this on my Spotify. Damn. Cloud End literally looks like the gate at Disneyland. <laughs> when you're driving, or Disney World, sorry, Florida. Skyline was fun. Chopper, you got your ass knocked out. You were tossed around like a corpse. Multiple times. What was fun about it? You were unconscious 
for most of the arc, my dude. You did beat up Gendatsu. Like, you got you got your first big win. But then you got your ass handed to you. God, they haven't been on a boat in so long. I forgot they were pirates. <laughs> Old kind little white one. I really thought they were gonna do the like everyone runs down to the beach to say goodbye to them thing. I'm glad they didn't. Alright, let's drop a boat out of the sky. The log updated up here? Oh, sure. Sure, why not? Interesting, I, I was expecting a scene where like Robin told them all that Goldie Roger was here. I'm surprised we didn't get that. One from Steam Park. How does it not exist? The Cloud's End would be a great ride. <laughs> the face of the ship! <laughs> that was good. That's a good bit. I've never seen the going Mary scared before. That was great. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I would warn people about this because Zoro and Sanji would absolutely attack that thing. <laughs> Cool. All right. So, so question, how does that thing get back up? Does it just like swim around looking for the next knock up stream? Or did they just remove that octopus from its house? I think they might have just kidnapped that octopus. <laughs> cool. Who's ringing it, do you think? Oh my god, I actually can't imagine standing that close to a bell that large while it's ringing. It would be so loud. Are they trying to Jacob's Ladder this shit right at the end? Was this a dream or was it real? <laughs> what a visual. I wonder if this screen ever gets updated. I feel like it must, right? Because they added Chopper at some point to it, so it must. Oh, just natural. Of course, guys. It was in the sky. But my house has now been fucked up. Oh my god, when Nami finds out that they were going to give that giant hunk of gold. <laughs> Lockable refrigerator. It's a good bit. Is this air current taking us to filler or to main story? <laughs> I love that Usopp moved before Nami even did anything. <laughs> he knew she's about to lose it. Oh my god, the change in pressure would be so weird to feel, right? Because you get so used to, like, how thin the air is. <laughs> it's actually nice having Sanji away from women for a while in that arc. 
Obviously, he still did things because of Nami, but like. Oh god, what are you doing? Is he on top of the balloon jumping up and down? Yeah. How did I guess that one? <laughs> Just absolutely assaulting this octopus that is saving his ship and his friends' lives. At least take your shoes off before you go on the trampoline. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He's pushing air out with every jump. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Luffy, Sanji's gonna fucking murder you. Look <laughs> 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 on the fucking octopus's face. Oh. <laughs> Protecting the ship. <laughs> The dials! Right! Oh my god, how did I not think of that? Let's go, Usopp. Well done. Using the technology of Skypea to save the day. This is why we love Usopp, you know what I mean? But the, why'd you grab him by the nose? They sink the Going Merry. <laughs> Skypea ends with it at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> that poor octopus can never go home. <laughs> Jesus, Soro. Oh, Alright, what a crazy place to stop. I guess we'll find out on Thursday what that means. Um, yeah, Skypea. Skypea. Um, one piece. I just wanna, is, are, am I watching the next episode? Or am I reacting to it? I'm gonna watch, I watch all the filler, but am I reacting to it? Oh, it's G8. Okay. So the next 10 episodes are filler that everybody loves, and so I need to watch it. I'm gonna, everyone's like, at least react to the filler that is, um, G8. Because apparently it's very good. Uh, and then I'm going to skip Ocean's Dream and Foxy's Return. So we'll do... F so uh, coming up here, we got G8, then Long 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 Ring Long Island. Uh, then we skip to Water 7, which is the thing that like people want me to watch. Wa people have been excited about Water 7 and his lobby for a while, which is crazy because that is so many episodes. I have this list of things. All right. Um, Skypea, we did it. We beat it. We accomplished it. We climbed the mountain in the sky and we came down the other side. And honestly, like, look, I understand people have some feelings about my feelings. I get it. Totally understand. I hope you all have your own feelings about your own feelings. Um, I think ultimately where I walked away from Alabasta a little bit disappointed in it, I think that I wasn't in this. I, I ultimately think Skype was really fun and there was a lot of great stuff in it. And I think that the expectation that I wasn't going to enjoy it is so interesting to me now because it did a lot of things differently. Uh, and, you know, there were definitely episodes in it that I didn't think were great. But, like, for uh, what? Like, how many episodes was um, Skypea? Skypea was 153 to 195. So it was 42 episodes. For a 42-episode arc that I would say maybe 
I didn't like the three flashback ones. So that's three, maybe two others that I was like kind of uh, on. Five out of 43 episodes not being my favorite. That's a pretty good arc. You know what I mean? Like that's a pretty good TV show. But if you think about a four season TV show, 10 episodes a season, 40 episodes. If there's five episodes in that 40, you're like, it's a pretty damn good TV show, right? And so, I don't know. Yeah, I think overall, Skypea worked for me. I, I definitely had some questions, and I still have some questions about the show. And the way the story is unfolding is the slowest thing I've ever experienced in my life. And trying to remember some stuff that happened 100 episodes ago is really hard, especially with how much other television I watch, right? Because of how much we react to, I think that I probably, and the stuff that I'm not watching on reactions, the amount of television I consume a week is a lot. And I think that that definitely is detrimental to my remembering of things at times, for sure, right? I think when you intake that much, it is harder than say, if you didn't, obviously, that was a dumb thing to say. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I like Skypea. I think that I wish Enel's plan made a little bit more sense. But as a villain, I thought that he was big and fun and like, you know, he he was worthy of the moment. You know, I still think Konis' dad coming back in the moment that he did is hilarious because it just really goes to something that I don't love about the show. And I think that there's a lot of comments that about like, well, if you don't love this thing, then you can't love One Piece. And it's like, I can love 75% of something and love the show. Like a 75 to me is a good score for a TV show. If you're a seven and a half out of 10, I'll watch every season. You know what I mean? Um... I, fuck, I've watched all of shows that I thought were much less good than a 75. And I think that One Piece is better than a 75 at times. But it's also worse than a 75 at other times. It's kind of all over the place. Um, kind of just by virtue of how long it is, right? And some of the pacing of the anime. Stuff that I feel is probably not as paced out in the manga. There's a lot of, like, repeated reaction shots that slow the show down to get to the like 22 minute mark. Um, some episodes really, and, and uh, Skype was the first time where I really felt it, where I was like, oh, this is all, this this is just time wasting. Like this is literally, there's not enough plot in this episode to fill it out. So we just are gonna cut to stuff you've seen before or cut to reaction shots that aren't moving. Um, and it, it dragged Skype a little bit. I don't think it ruined the arc and I really did enjoy it. But I do think that the people talking about how the show starts to slow down here. I do feel it. And I, I think that those people have a point. Um, but ultimately, I, I really I really did like it. I like a lot of the concepts. I got so excited about the Poneglyph. Nico Robin is by far the most interesting character on the show, which is funny because at the end of Alabasta, I was like, oh, fuck, she's going with them. Gross. But now I, I do think that because her goals are a little bit more tangible and a little bit more explored, um, and she's actually like, actively invested in her ongoing mission in a way that nobody else is is really nice right like I, I think that she has quickly become the character who is the most invested in what is going on in the larger world storyline that the show is slowly putting out there um and so i care about her because that's the kind of storytelling that i get invested in and so some of the more exposition-y sort of, we're going to explain to you how to feel about this stuff that One Piece sometimes does and that other animes do as well. That stuff doesn't work for me as much because I, I don't need you to explain it to me. I get it. You know what I mean? And, and some of that's the kids show element of it, right? Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so curious where we're going because it's fun, right? I don't actually know what's, I have no fucking clue what's next. Like I know like, I know the names of the arcs that are coming up, um, but they don't mean anything to me. So I don't, I don't mind knowing the names because they're, they're not spoilers to me. Like, I have no idea what a G8 is other than a G8 summit in our world is like the like eight largest economies getting together and having a conversation. I like, I know that that exists, but um, I, I don't think the eight largest economies of One Piece are about to show up. So I don't, I just don't know. And I like water seven means fucking nothing to me. You know what I mean? But I also don't, other than going towards the next Poneglyph for Robin's storyline, like, I have no idea what is next for Sanji. He wants to go to the All Blue, but the All Blue might not be a place. It might be a place we don't know. You know what I mean? Like, there's so, there's so much stuff like that that I'm really excited, really, really excited to get to. And it's going to be curious how it happens. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, this has been a journey, man. Enno was a great villain. I really, you know, I, I, I respect Wiper a lot. I get where he's coming from. I feel like they wrapped up the colonialism a little easy by being like, Gonfell, <laughs> why don't you just do it? Whereas I feel like uh, it would have been nice to have it kind of be about Wiper taking over Kalgara's place and leading from a place of the lesson that he learned here. Gonfall being at the age that he is, he, he kind of came into this arc having already kind of learned the lesson of this arc a little bit like he came into it with a different perspective than everybody else and i think that wiper leading them into the future having learned some empathy and and, and softened and i think that that would have worked for me better than giving it back to the guy that fucked up the last time um in the like pumpkin scene so that the, the, that choice to just be like gone fall <laughs> why don't you be god again i was like ah, i don't know i also think that it would have been narratively more interesting to me for them to move on from the term god in this right for them to realize that they had elevated enel to a position of godhood inappropriately and used that as a like we we have been worshiping our leader but we just need an actual leader we don't need god we need president we need prime minister we need whatever the term that they'd used i think it would have been interesting to see some introspection by the society on the terms that they've been using and the power that they gave Enil over them by using those words. Um, some exploration of that, I think, would have been really good for the end of the arc. Um, and so, yeah, in, in some ways, like, I, I feel like we landed the boat. I think that Sky P is good. I think that what keeps it, what holds it back from being great for me are a few episodes I didn't love and a, a resolution that I don't really feel like these characters explored the issues, the societal and, like, larger issues that led to some of their problems. Um, and they're just kind of going back to a status quo, weirdly, by giving it to Gonfall, by not talking about the problems and, and, and the, uh, allowing their mutual pain from NL be a balm over this short moment in the interim here, in the grief period, where down the line, I don't think the Shandorans are going to love this choice. Um, unless Gonfell is the best guy, you know, you know what I mean? Like, unless they really pull it off. Um, but I would have loved to have seen some of that work be done in the show instead of just assuming it's going to happen off screen. I know the show's about the Straw Hats, but this arc wasn't. Like, the Straw Hats are there for this arc, but this arc isn't really about them. And so I wish the ending had been a little bit less about them. But overall, really good. I, I, I'm excited uh, to see NL land on the moon. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely... I would put this ahead of Alabasta. Um, this is, like, right in the middle, right? I would, like... I, I would put this in, like, the middle arc of One Piece. And I think it would be higher if it wasn't as long. This was one where, like, the story didn't justify the length for me. Um, whereas I think the story justified the length for Alabasta, but there was just a bunch of other stuff thrown in there that dra dragged Alabasta down for me personally. Because, like, I put Alabasta near the bottom. This is near the middle. Jaya is up there, though. Jaya was great for, you know, a six episode, eight episode, whatever it was. Um, yeah, I'm excited to move on, though. I'm excited to get to this future stuff. I'm excited to, you know, th there's a lot that I'm excited about coming up in One Piece. Because I feel like we're starting to settle into our roles with the crew. I feel like Nico's been a great addition in this last saga. Uh, and as we get into Water 7 and Annie's Lobby and these, like, famous things that I know are important, but, like, I have no idea why. No idea what happens in them. Um, I'm really excited to see how Nico begins to, like, help our Straw Hats grow up. Because that already feels like that's happening. Especially between Nico and Zoro in um, Skypea. I felt those moments. And so I'm curious to see how she's going to draw out maybe some more mature responses from our characters moving forward. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave mean comments down below. Because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her. This episode, that algorithm goddess is... I'm going to give it to Konis, man. Konis kind of tied things together. She put the button on it. She got to blow the whistle for the octopus that never gets to go home, which I think is sad. I thought for a second it was going to let go and then let go of all the air and like shoot back up like a balloon flying back into the sky. 
Uh, it didn't. It just became very small and is now stuck in prison? Is G8 just like a, like a supermax prison, maybe? I don't know. We'll find out on Thursday. If you want to follow me on the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. As always, do something nerdy tonight.